Hey, this is your favorite German composer, Sebastian Schutt. Welcome back to another episode of Nuke Timeout. Today we will have a look at how you can make the use of Nuke's retiming notes more efficient. All the notes of Nuke have a hidden knob called Knob Changed, which I will take advantage of in this episode. So if you're not familiar with this topic, please check out the last Nuke Timeout episode 5, so you're up to speed. Also, you can find all the tools and Python scripts on the website, splitthediff.com. Just click on the link in the description. Are you ready? Let's go! Having a wide selection of retiming nodes in Nuke is a great thing, but using them all over your script the default way can make things hard to read. Let's say we have multiple library elements, for example smoke or fire, and we want to place them on our shot. I'm using a frame count sequence so we can easily see how our frames get remapped. In this example, by just looking at the setup, I wouldn't know which frames of the element I'm actively using, when I would be running out of footage, or which speed I'm looking at. Furthermore, all of the retiming nodes have different attributes. If I'm using an offset node and I'm happy with the actual endpoint of the element, but I want to play the element twice as fast, I will have to switch to a different retiming node and need to set everything up again. Alternatively, I could solve the problem by using an expression on the offset node since there is no native way of changing the speed. I came up with the idea of using a container, a group node, for my retime setup and then I'll distribute the information internally to whatever retiming node I choose to go for. That way I can also set up a visual guide for me to easily see what's going on with the element and stay consistent throughout my script. Let me show you how to assemble it. I use a group node and populate it with a couple of attributes that I will need to be in control of for my retiming. I want to define which frame of the element will be the start frame, as well as where I want to place this start frame on my com timeline. You can look at it as an anchor point. We will still be able to also use the frames before our defined element start frame. This is just important for placement. You usually have a specific reference frame that you use to place a certain element and you want to be in control of which frame of the element you are using right at that frame. Then we need a speed knob. I will also add an overall multiplier attribute that can be useful to blend elements in or out. Okay, let's leave it at that for now and let's jump into the group. First I create a no-op node and populate it with some custom knobs. I use expressions to collect the first and last frame of the incoming element. Then I create a dot node and change the name to dot without a number. I'll show you later why. I'll drop in a time offset node so that we have a placeholder for our retiming node of choice. Next up is another dot node. Now we need our overall multiplier. I'll set the following expression so our multiply node gets its input from our multiplier knob of our group. Back to group node level. The main goal is to set up a global formula that outputs the actual frame of the element we are looking at, while taking the element and comp start times into account, as well as the speed. We can then pass it on to whatever node works with actual frame numbers for retiming. I came up with the following expression. This one only works if the speed value is positive though. In order to being able to play elements backwards, we can extend it with an if statement. I will also use some expressions to calculate the new in and out points of our incoming element with the retime applied. In this case, it outputs infinite since the speed is set to zero. Let me quickly change it to one. Now I will create a new tab with a pull down menu that will enable us to switch between different retiming nodes. I want to use the following nodes time offset, retime, time warp. Oflow 2, since this is the latest version that Nuke uses internally, and Kronos. 
It's time to take advantage of Nuke's callback, not changed. At this point, I have to refer you to the last episode of Nuke Timeout, episode 5, if you are not familiar with this topic. It quickly introduces the concept of using this feature and will bring you up to speed. As a quick summary, every node has an invisible knob called knob changed. You can assign a function to it and it will only get executed once you change a specific knob. In our case, the pull down menu knob for our retime type selection. Okay, let me show you the function that we will assign to it. I created this Python file in our .nuke environment. First, I imported the nuke module and started defining the function that I want to assign. With nuke this node and nuke this knob, I can extract the information about which node I am dealing with and which knob I am tweaking. I stored those into variables for ease of use. Since I want to use different retiming nodes, I have to make sure that I convert the information from our main controls in the group node separately for all of the different node classes. They have different knob names and approaches, some expect frame numbers, others an offset value. The offset node needs the letter. That's why I came up with this expression here, which will take our group node input values and turns them into the offset value that this node expects. For the retime node, we have to pass down our element and comp start frames. The time warp as well as the optical flow nodes expect the actual output frame, which we already calculated in our out frame knob. The begin method lets me dive into the actual group node so I can access the nodes inside. I'll check for the input node and collect its outgoing connection and store the connected node in a variable. This is supposed to be the retiming node that we want to switch and I want to delete before we bring in the new choice. I'll jump out of the group node with the end method again. Now I'm checking which knob gets tweaked. If it is the one called pull, the one we set up to choose between the different retiming nodes, I will proceed. I'm checking for the value that has been selected and store it. I added an if statement as a little cheap fail prevention. I'm checking if there actually is a retiming node or if the node connected to the input is actually the dot node that we created earlier. I want to delete the old retiming node before creating a new one based on our choice in the pull-down menu. That way we are not deleting the next node connected to the input in case you accidentally deleted the retiming node at some point and it is missing. That's why I created this dot node so we can specifically ask for it. Lastly, I have to set up a couple of if statements so based on the node class that we create, we distribute either our expression formulas or connections to our group node knobs. For the retime node, I actually have to change a few parameters to make it properly work with our setup. That's it. Let's save the script and open Nuke. We can now assign this code to the knob change knob of our group node. The placeholder node we are using right now is the time offset node. Let's switch nodes. Our knob function works and it replaces the current retiming node with our new selection. I quickly set some retime values. As you can see, we can switch through all nodes and still keep our retiming, including the speed. I usually start with the time offset and then based on if I have to use frame interpolation or other features, I'll switch to other retiming nodes. Something very important. Although we told our group node to only run the actual node switch script, when we change values in our pull-down menu, it will still have to run that part that checks if we are using this knob or not. Every time a parameter of the group node changes, even if it's only the position. This can have a negative outcome on your nuke script interactivity. I would like to thank Attila Gasparets, who made me aware of a very interesting workaround by MJT. Instead of assigning the Python script to the container node, we will create a dummy node to carry our pull-down menu and place it inside the group. The only thing I have to change in my Python script is changing nuke this node to nuke this group, since we now have to communicate one level up in order to access our container controls. Now we can assign the script to the knob change knob of our dummy node inside the group. In our container node, we then pick the pull-down menu to access it directly from outside the group. Switching between retiming nodes works and since the actual dummy node does move around inside the group, our script doesn't get executed until we actually use the pull-down menu. In the beginning I was complaining about the lack of visible information we have when using multiple retiming nodes. 
To solve this, we will use some TCL in the nodes label so we can see the output frame and speed as well as the new in and out points of our retimed element. I will talk a bit more about TCL in upcoming episodes. Since I want to get a visual cue if my retimed element starts later than the actual shot frame range in point, I will use a TCL if statement that will switch the frame number color from green to red. And I'll use the same code for the last frame. That way we can get a great overview of what's actually going on and we can quite easily notice if our element is running out of frames within the shot. Lastly, to polish our setup, a useful feature is to add a button that lets you open up the properties of whatever node you're using inside. That way we don't have to expose every single knob of the retiming node, but they are accessible really quickly. Another neat thing to add are checkboxes you can use to define what happens before the start and after the end frame of an element, as well as before the comp start frame. I set up switches inside the group node that I connected to those checkboxes via expressions, so I can switch to black in those specific situations if needed. I just noticed that I forgot my center tag in the beginning of my TCL code, so the display text looks a bit more neat. Also, to make it even more efficient, we should display the class of the retiming node we are using internally, so we can see what's going on with just one glance at it. As an alternative, if you don't feel comfortable with knob changed in Python, you can connect the node pull-down menu to a switch node via an expression that changes the input to whichever retiming node you selected. That way you have to carry around all of the nodes inside the group though. One advantage is that everything you set up in the properties of each node will be saved even after you've switched to a different node. The first approach deletes and recreates fresh nodes every time. That brings us to the end of this episode. You can find all Python and TCL codes as well as the actual group node on my website, splitthediff.com. My name is Sebastian Schütt and I'll see you soon.